We're talking about the we're talking about the Avengers. We're talking about the movie that, that all our podcasts have been pretty much leading up to, which is interesting. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you look at if we're talking about um, podcasts, I'm excited about this one. This, I'm pretty excited about this one. I, I'm I'm more excited about like uh, Captain America: Civil War. And I'm very excited to talk about the, like the Infinity War and Endgame and stuff like that. Mm, so yeah, it's getting there. But we got we got ways to go before we get to Endgame. Wow, we got maybe what a dozen movies before we get to that, right? Ant yeah. Man, we got Spider Man, we got oh my goodness! Oh my I'm looking goodness. forward to Ant Man just because I really, really enjoyed that movie a lot. And I don't know, we'll see. Oh, good, good. Well, actually, we're going to talk a little bit about Ant Man today. Oh, that's time. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I for sure don't have a question about it. No, no, but uh, there's a that I wanted to go over uh, some of the, his, the comic history of the Avengers versus what the movies have done. So uh, it's it's nice. actually a whole bunch. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. Yeah, I will so, say uh, just the beginning of this movie just. Um, I didn't remember it being like it's really bang, bang, bang at the beginning with reintroducing um uh Hawkeye, Black Widow, um the Incredible Hulk. Yes, hundred percent. Like I, I liked how so Josh when when Josh Winden has I is that he says his name Josh Whedon I think Josh Whedon Whedon Whedon. Uh, he did. I would say he did a very good job of this movie um, because he had to uh, reintroduce all these characters, put them in an ensemble cast and then have them go. And you have a lot of uh, personalities conflicting against all this stuff. Like you got Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got Scarlett Johansson. I don't really see I don't really see Chris Evans being hard to work with. But you have a lot of competing things here. And I think he did a bang up job. I think he did pretty good. The movie, the movie's fast. Well, we're, we're we're getting into it by probably the 30, 30 minute mark. So right. yeah, we got a lot going on, and and it's a bit, it's a it's a it, the Marvel's The Avengers is the movie that all comic book people have been waiting for for most of their lives. Mm-hmm. Like just the idea that it's it's like twenty twelve, you're sitting in a movie theater and you're about to watch the people that you have loved since you were a child on the big screen. I would say perfectly um, de- defined, perfectly shown in a way that's enjoyable, true to a lot of comic stuff, uh, a smash hit. I mean, it's just, it's incredible what they did. It's it's really incredible that they put this movie together, and it's incredible that they kept this universe together for so many other movies. It's, it's fantastic. Right. Yeah, and, and there really isn't a... I mean, I guess... <laughs> Maybe your opinion on Iron Man 3 weighs into this, but there isn't really a dud in the bunch. Oh, there's a couple duds, <laughs> but uh, I'm being harder on it than you are. Right. But as far as without you watching get that critical movies, comic book absolutely. reader eye that I don't have. That's true. Yeah, that's true. But will I watch any of these movies? Absolutely. I would watch any of these movies. Like 100 percent. Right. Yeah. If you're, if, you know, it's a rainy Sunday and you're laying on the couch. You're not going to like say, oh, no, I don't want to watch Iron Man 3. I mean, you'll let it Absolutely play. Absolutely not. You'll watch it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would definitely say some things. <laughs> right. But we'll wait till Iron Man 3 comes out. But anyway, let's get started. Go ahead. Ask me some questions. Um, I don't know if... So my first question uh, kind of leaps off of where we're introduced to Hawkeye. I don't know if there's anything that you want to say about the introductions to either Black Widow or... The Hulk in this, I will say, like in the past, we've been talking about these introductions of characters that are kind of <clears throat> inserted into movies about someone else. So we've got mm-hmm. Black Widow showing up in an Iron Man movie. We've got Hawkeye showing up in a Thor movie. Um, you said that they really didn't need to put Hawkeye in that Thor movie. And after yep. after rewatching the Avengers, you're two thousand percent right. Yeah, it's just yeah. The, the, he shouldn't have been in Thor at all. Um, and 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 they almost shot the movie like that, like you'd never seen um, Black Widow either, even though she had a really good introduction in Iron Man Two. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I kind of feel like they just said, "Let's act like this is the first time we've seen these people," you know, and right. I think that's the best way to do it. Yeah, uh, but uh, Scarlett Johansson is still odd. Uh, she's still. 
sexualized, and I mm-hmm. don't know if there's any way to get around it. Um, there's actually when I was watching it again, there's this couple of scenes where it's just her butt, you know, and like you know what I don't okay. I don't actually remember those, but yeah. yeah. It, it, during the interrogation of Loki, uh, it was just her butt right there, and I was like, "Come on, guys! Like, are we done? Are we? Let's, let's, let's come on!" Hey, and so like, you know what? I, in, in um in this movie, I didn't remember this until the rewatch, but she talks about having a, a particular set of skills. She doesn't mm-hmm. go into what those are, but this is when she's talking to Loki, I think. Yeah, like interrogate interrogates of skills. I think she's what she means. That's what I, I, I that's I, what I assume because there's a couple of scenes in the movie where. She interrogates people basically by acting like she's in danger or she's being put on her heels, and then she uses that to be able to get information out of people. Yeah, I mean, they did that with the interrogation, with the scene with the that Russian dude and all this other stuff, and I agree with you on that. Um, but it's just, I, I don't know. I, 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 I think they still, yeah, if you look at all the Marvel movies, I don't want to get too deep into this. If you look at it from from Iron Man 2 to... Avengers Endgame, mm-hmm. Scarlett Johansson's uh, Black Widow arc is very interesting. I want to see more how they deal with that when we get to Black Widow when it comes out. Yeah, but I want to spend I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, Clint and um, Natasha. So in the original comics, Clint and Natasha have like this weird relationship where um, Hawkeye wants to steal stuff, and Natasha is using Hawkeye as a because he's a Russian spy, and they do this weird back and forth against Iron Man for a while, and then eventually they, they reform and become heroes. And so you get kind of a, you get a, you get a sense of that. There's a connection between Black Widow and Hawkeye in the comic, I mean, in the movie, and I think they did a really good job with that, 100%. Uh, and that stays throughout the movies, and I, I think they, they, they did a great job, because that's a very obscure comic reference that no one's going to understand unless you read the comics, but Hawkeye and Black Widow having a relationship uh, it's really good, and I thought they did a great job with that. All right, well, I've got that as a question, actually. So you're already yeah. heading me off at the pass. Oh, great. Do you wanna do you wanna go in and spend a little bit more time on their relationship now, or hit it later, or just have well, you said all I you think, have to say? Yeah, I think. Well, okay, so so okay, so you have the original Marvel six one six relationship with Hawkeye and Black Widow, and then. This movie is more based on the Marvel 1610 universe, the ultimate universe that I've talked about. Mm-hmm. And then in that universe, Hawkeye and Black Widow also have uh, this kind of like uh, really deep friendship relationship as well. And so I think that the comics are just giving the characters proper respect as w- w- when they talk about these characters and what they've been through and everything else. So it's not really much more to say, except I really appreciate the Hawkeye Black Widow connections in the movie. So is it is their their relationship their friend excuse me their friendship rooted in the same kind of way where he was sent to bring her in and he saw that um you know basically she could rather than taking her prisoner essentially she could be uh valuable. In the original comics no in the original comics they were just kind of like thieves and spies and just kind of hooligans until finally they start like until they become kind of like they were formed and decided to be good guys um but in the 1610 universe there is some kind of assumption to that but not much so no so the 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 marvel the mcu definitely created a backstory for them that makes a little bit more sense as far as the mcu goes okay cool all right so let's uh we've we hit on one of my Questions like three quarters of the way down. We're going to go back up to the top near the beginning of the movie. Um, when Loki first appears, <clears throat> they're doing tests or they're in the room where they're doing tests with the Tesseract. Yeah. Um, and Loki appears because of the Tesseract. It, it transports him from wherever he was after fighting with Thor to Earth. Um, he's got a staff with a blue stone in it. Um, yep, yep. So it seems like there's a big tesseract in the room and a little tesseract in the room. Can you clear that up for me? Yeah. So uh, there's some in the movie. There is some idea that Loki was kind of messing with the tesseract to get it to open to get him to appear. Uh, the sphere 
and the Tesseract are both Infinity Gems. The, 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 the spear that he's holding is actually the Mind Gem, and the Tesseract is the Space Gem. There, like when the movie came out, there were some fear. We all knew that the Tesseract was was a space gem at that point. We all had some some speculations because at the very end we got uh, we, Thanos. So we, we, we comic book readers, yes, yeah. comic book readers <laughs> definitely started making some assumptions about that because we knew that Thanos uh, was in the picture finally, and it, and we knew that the Infinity Gems will come up. Um, but there was some back and forth about whether the spear was the mind gem. If you in the in the movie The Avengers, uh, whenever Loki touches someone with the spear, it, it, he takes over their mind. Yes. And the mind gem has that ability. So uh, the movie, the movie The Avengers does not answer any of those questions and doesn't make any kind of connections to any of that. Uh, and, and in the comics, there's nothing like that either. So what you I said think, about yeah, the mind gem certainly like clears up some things because I was, you know, um, I was watching it and wondering, well. The Tesseract doesn't help you control people. No. Um, no. They were both blue, though, right, in the movie? Yes. See, that's the problem. I think... So, I, the original movie, The Avengers, I almost 100% guarantee that Joss Whedon and the Ryers did not plan to have the spear be the mind gem. I, thought they, I think they just decided that, that it would just be the spear that had some abilities, but it wouldn't be the mind gem. I think they... Uh, rewrote that and decided to change it uh, in uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron just to make it simpler. Like they have to, they have to establish the gems to get ready for uh, Thanos and the other movies. And so it's easier if they just say this magical staff has the mind gem in it. Do but they recolor? The Do they recolor it later on? Uh, no, no, the, the, it's always blue. But in, in, when we talk about Avengers: Age of Ultron, they actually crack that blue orb, and the and the mind gem's yellow in it. So no, yeah, it, it, that, it's a lot of logical problems here, Mike. Because like, if you think about it, Thanos in the comics wants the Infinity Gem. So in the movies, he's going to use Loki to get the um, get the Tesseract, which is the mind, which is the space stone. I'm sorry, and in trade. Thanos is going to let him take over Earth, which makes sense, right? Right. But why would Thanos give him the mind gem to help him do that? Like, mm -hmm. he needs all six gems. Why give someone a gem if you need? You know, it's like, it's odd. It doesn't make a lot of sense. And comic book fans have always kind of, like, debated this logic. Like, why would Thanos do this? It doesn't make any sense. So I, here's my take. When the Avengers movie came out, no one planned for that staff to have the mind gem in it and then when age of ultron started uh was put out they recolored it to make it the mind I mean, not recolor it reconned it to make it the mind gem it does make a lot of logical sense you really have to squint your eyes and just kind of say okay whatever let's keep going um but the logic of it is not it's kind of silly okay all right cool we uh we covered two of my questions with that one conversation so oh, that's good um next up <clears throat> Who's the woman that works with Nick Fury at the beginning? Maria Hill. Duh. I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, Maria Hill is uh, she's in she's in the comics definitely. She spends she's a lot she's in the comics heavily. She takes over Shield for a while. She becomes the deputy director and then the director back and forth. She's a pretty big comic character. She's uh, she's and, really uh, awesome in this movie. Is she? I mean, I. I don't have anything to compare her to, but, you know, for like a sidekick, especially a woman that's a sidekick, I think she's a pretty awesome character in the movie. I guess I'm going I'm going to say, OK, uh, I think they could have done a much better job with this character. Um, I'm going to put a link into the, into, the, into the notes. I think they could have done a better job with her uh, and the person who played her. What is her name? Uh, you got right here. Almost here. Where is her? Uh, Kobe Smolders. I think she could have done a better job. I think she, like, if she she plays Maria Hill for a lot of the movies. Like, mm -hmm. she's in right. Avengers. She's in Age of Ultron. She's in uh, uh, she's in Infinity Wars. She's in Endgame. She's in um, Captain America. Uh, she's in Captain America. Uh, Winter Soldier. 
She's also in, uh, I think she's in some Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes, even though I didn't watch any of those. So, I mean, she's a good actress, I would say. But I don't think they really used her as well as they could have. She has like a couple of throw- throwaway lines here and there, but nothing real major. I kind of just, I'm disappointed in how they used her in the movies. So to your I, mind, you liked that her. character in the in the MCU never lives up to where that character's, their their place in the comic books? Absolutely not. No, absolutely not. Uh, and uh, it's just, it's a big movie with a lot of people in it. And right. everybody can't be the star, but uh, I think she looks like she, Smolder, um Kobe Smolder looks like Maria Hill. She looks a lot like Maria Hill, um, but I could, I think she could have done a lot more cool stuff in the movie. And she does some cool things, um, but I kind of just wish she would have done. I think the long tail. I think at some point, I think that she should have she should have had a bigger part in other movies, and she just didn't have that. Well, you know what? There's still time. She could get her own TV show on Disney Plus. You never know. I would love. I would actually love that. Maria Hill, agent. Maria Hill, director of Shield, would be awesome. But I, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, side note: that actress's name. What is it again? Kobe Smolder. That could be a comic book character, all of its yeah. own. You know. You know, she was in uh, how how um, how I met your mother. I never watched that. Oh, you should. It's good. Yeah. That, that's what she's kind of famous for. That's why, uh, and that's why okay. when when she was announced to be Maria Hill, I was kind of excited because she has some she has a lot of abilities as an actress she's kind of fun um but we just never saw any of that in the movies at all which is mm. like whatever okay well yeah i have nothing again, to go on i thought she was a pretty good character she's yeah she's okay but again it's a big movie it's a lot right. going on so not everybody's gonna have a gonna have a whole bunch and she has a couple cool scenes so yeah i mean hey she stood out enough for me to ask you about her so yeah true yeah. all right um, so in this movie, there's a couple of uh, sly references to Phase Two that uh, Shield and Nick Fury are working on. Do you mm-hmm. know anything about what that is? Yeah. So um, this is all this is all MCU movie stuff. Okay. So Phase One was working on the Tesseract, trying to get it to work. It, uh, let's go back a little bit. Yeah. In Captain America: The First Adventure, which we talked about last time. Uh, they use a test rack to make weapons, right? So in Avengers, Hydra did. yeah, Hydra did. Yeah. So in Avengers, Shield is doing the same thing. So there's a couple of schemat- so the schematics that we see, and a couple of designs mm-hmm. that show them trying to use the the um, test rack to make weapons. Nick, and that makes Nick Fury trying to keep sense. that a secret until the near the end of the movie, though. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think it when I think Phase Two would be like. Nick Fury thinks this. I'm going to collect this group of people with extraordinary abilities, and hopefully they can stop these threats. If they can't, then I'm going to make weapons that will do it. And so that's phase two. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, but again, Nick Fury was right. He, it worked. He he got he collected his band of of people, and they were able to. Uh, assess the threat and stop it, and it worked out well for uh, for him. So again, he didn't really need uh, phase two. Okay. So if- you know, wh- real quick, real quick, in um in Captain Marvel, which you're going to see way down the road, uh, he actually gets the name Avengers because that was uh, Carl Danvers' uh, name, like her, her pilot name, and he like. It was the name she had as a pilot, and he took that and called, and that's why he made the Avengers Initiative. Oh, okay, cool. Um, all right. So a little bit after Loki gets the Tesseract, yeah, we see him back on some planet or asteroid or something floating in space, mm-hmm. and he's talking to a lizard guy. Mm-hmm. Who's that lizard guy? You know, I don't know. I I'm pretty hundred percent sure they made him up for the movie. I can probably go back and look at it, but I never I didn't recognize him from the comics at, at all. But he's just kind of a henchman for Thanos. Um and so the movie's kind of being kind of sly. We know that there's somebody behind this lizard dude. We know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we don't we don't know who the big bad is until after the movie. And then when we see Thanos that's when everybody's going nuts, and we'll talk more about that. Is uh, the way the like, lizard guy's dressed or anything, is that like a a, a a typical 
race of alien creatures we would see in the comics? No, not at all. And in fact, here's some, here's some things that we're that's starting to bounce off each other. The Chitari, which is the alien war race that invaded Earth, mm-hmm. that came from the Ultimate 1619. Loki and is from and the idea of Loki fighting the Avengers is from the original Marvel Universe. And so that like you have a new thing bouncing against an old thing that's kind of combined for the movie. And it's, it doesn't really cause any problems, but um, like Loki never invaded Earth with a with a, a alien war race that didn't happen in the comics. Um, but you have to have a big set piece in this movie because because it's a it's an awesome movie. You have to you have to have the fight stuff, right? Uh, but the but the the Shatari invaded Earth in the sixteen night the sixteen ten universe. Uh, which is much more recent. Um, so again, were they, have, were they uh, working with anybody when they did that, or was it just? No, it was just a race of aliens that showed up and started killing people, and then the Avengers stopped them. It's free. That's that's exactly what happened. There's no deeper thing to talk about. Okay. Um, so, so again, um, no, it's, like it's just it's just like it's just space. Like like logically, Loki can't shouldn't be able to talk in space because there's no air. So again, there's a lot going on <laughs> that you just kind of have to be like, eh, let's just hope it makes, it makes sense. It's, it's space stuff, space magic stuff, and then just move on to it. There's a lot of that actually in this movie, and you just got to kind of deal with it. Right. Okay. All right, I think you've talked about similar things in previous episodes, but um, in this movie, we get to see Thor's hammer hitting Captain America's shield. Yeah. Is that a callback to anything? Yeah, it's so that is an old school reference. The idea of Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor kind of meeting like Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor are the big three. They're the big three Avengers. They're the they're the three Avengers that uh you you always want to like be around, hang out with. They're the core three. Okay. All other Avengers are kind of around them. So when Iron Man fought Thor, it was fun to watch. Like I don't think there's ever a time where Iron Man thought there was a time where Iron Man fought Thor. It lasted a couple seconds because Thor just completely destroyed Iron Man's suit. It wasn't even a thing. <laughs> um, but when Thor jumps up and he hits Cap Hammer, I don't really think that ha- ever happened in the comics. But we need to set power levels, and that's what this movie's doing. And he's doing it very cleverly. Like power levels are a big, big part of Marvel universe. It- it's like who is more powerful, who is as powerful as who. So when Iron Man and Thor fought, as a comic book reader, it makes sense to me because Thor is super powerful, but Iron Man's suit is also powerful. But at the end, Thor probably would win eventually. Now, Captain America is not even as close as powerful as Thor, but when Thor hit the, uh, Cap's shield with the hammer, that shield again, is a, which is a big icon, held up to it. It didn't. It didn't bend. Didn't break. Right. And so that kind of signaled to everybody, okay, Captain America's shield, super awesome. Thor's hammer, super awesome. Right. And like that's kind of what the movie's doing. And then when we get and then even before that, when Captain America fought Loki, Captain America was like ha- was struggling because Loki's more more is stronger than Captain America. So what the movie's doing very cleverly, I'm glad you brought this up because it's very clever. The movie is is setting up these power dynamics. Like who's who, who's powerful, who's as powerful as who, how's it work? So when you watch the movie, you understand that Hulk shows up and he wants to fight Iron Man, that's gonna be a tough, tough battle, right? And so that's a that's power fantasy stuff that as a comic book reader, I really appreciate because that's what you talk about. Like when you're when you were a kid at the bus stop or whatever, talking to your friends about comics. You were you were having these arguments like who's more powerful, who could do this and that, and that and the movie is setting this up in a very clever, more very sophisticated, and most importantly, fun way. Right. Like Thor yeah. hitting Captain America's shield, it's just fun. And like remember, yeah, it causes well, like a, wait- a circle of damage, like all the trees just lay yeah, down, exactly. huge. Yeah, yeah, it's just fun. It's fun and like. I, I, when I watched this movie, I've been waiting for this movie for like 30 years. Mm-hmm. And so far, I've seen so many cool things. I've seen Loki show up. I've seen Thor like punch Iron Man. And I've seen him fly with his hammer. And I've seen 
I've seen Iron Man and Thor fight, and then Captain America just showed up. I've seen some really awesome things so far. Uh, and the movie's not even close to being over with. So uh, as far as that instance, it only has comic reference as as a geek moment that fans can appreciate. All right. We've got we've to do this now that you've brought it up. So you talked about power sure. levels. All right. Rank all of the Avengers in this movie from most powerful to least. Most powerful Hulk, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, and then um, uh, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch would be... Uh, Haw- I keep saying Scarlet Witch. Hawkeye, Black Widow would be the same. The same? Yeah. Mm, I think Black Widow could take Hawkeye. Okay. Uh, he, she did, actually, in the movie. So, yeah, you're right. So, then Black Widow and then Hawkeye. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. All right. Um, Phil Coulson has a special weapon in this movie that he uses to blast Loki. Yep. Is that a comic book thing or just an no, MCU thing? Just MCU. Yeah, there's a fancy big gun. I thought the gun looked cool. He said that um, in the movie, he said that they, um, they based it on the Destroyer tech from Thor. They were working mm-hmm. on it. They weren't really sure what it would do. Well, that makes sense because the destroy, like I said last time when we talked about Thor, the destroyer's blast is supposed to be extremely powerful and supposed to be able to destroy the world. And so if Loki is from Asgard and they made a weapon that's kind of based on the destroyer, it would make sense that it would hurt um and and be very painful to Loki. So that makes that's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Um I guess should we mention that Phil Coulson dies in this movie? Right, yeah, right after course. he blasts Loki, or well, yeah, that is, he gets stabbed a, right, right before, and then he dies right after. Yeah, that's a Joss Whedon thing. Um, everybody knew. Have you ever seen his movie? Um, uh, it's based off the show Firefly. It was called Serenity. Serenity. Yeah, I didn't. Yep. I didn't really like Serenity. Yeah, so he killed. I liked Firefly a lot. Yeah, and yes, so he Wash killed, in Firefly was yeah probably. Uh, one of my favorite characters, probably my that's what he most yeah, favorite. That's yeah, that's what he does. Okay. Like everybody knew that he was going to kill somebody off. And the thing is, he doesn't care. He does it again in Age of Ultron. He just kills off Quicksilver. And like it's kind of like his thing. He's like, I'm going to murder one of these characters to get the emotional reaction I want from you. Mm. And like it's a, and like I tell my creative Ryan students when I talk about creative Ryan, death is the laziest way. To get an emotional reaction, you kill off a character that someone likes. Of course, they're gonna react, and like it's just so lazy. And like it's like when he kills off Coulson, it's really lazy. It's just so lazy. <laughs> it's kind of amazing how lazy it is, but it, it is what it is. It's just like just let it happen. Let's keep going. Yeah. Um. But it's super super lazy. Before we get too far, I want. I don't know if you're ready to talk about this yet, but there's a scene where um. The Avengers are fighting on the um, helicarrier. Do you remember that scene? Yeah. They're arguing with yeah, each other? Yeah, they're all arguing. Um, before you start talking, it definitely seems like it's not a natural argument. And that we know Loki's on the helicarrier to try to stir up mischief. But is he somehow, other than just like kind of setting up the dominoes and letting them fall? Do you think in this movie Loki's an active, like he's playing some active role in that argument ha- happening? 100%. 100%. The movie never says this, but there's a scene where the 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 staff starts pulsing, making a sound, and then it shows it shows Loki's face. My opinion, Loki is 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 using the staff to create that tension and 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 strife in the team and cause them to fight. It's it's kind of obvious that that's what he's doing. Uh, but that's a callback to the original Avengers. Uh, he manipulated the Hulk in the original Avengers so that um, Thor would show up to fight the Hulk. So then Loki could trap Thor. It's, it's kind of convoluted. But the reason the Avengers showed up is because a guy named Rick Jones, which I'm going to talk about more and more often. It's, it'll get there. A guy named Rick Jones called the Avengers over radio and said, I need help. Someone's taking over my friend Hulk. Uh, and then um, the Avengers showed up 
And that's how they formed a team to stop Loki. And then they said, you know what? We're a great team. Let's let's stay together and fight crime. And that's how it worked. Uh, so that was a very clever kind of callback to um, to to the original comic. Loki kind of getting these people to come together to stop him. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I, I this again. Uh, I want to say real quick. Um, Rick Jones is not in any Marvel movies ever, but Rick Jones is a hugely important character for Marvel. And I'm really surprised we never see him in a uh, in any of these movies. But that's a that's another that's another topic. Who is Rick Jones? Rick Jones, when we talked about the Incredible Hulk, Rick Jones was a guy who was kind of like protesting a nuclear, the gamma bomb. Oh, and the guy playing the guitar Banner, or something. Yeah, right? Bruce Banner okay. had to run and push him into the safe zone, and that's how he became the Hulk. Rick Jones is a hugely important character. Like He's important for the Hulk. He's important for Captain America. He's important for the Avengers. Uh, he's important for Captain Marvel. Uh, and we never see him. And I don't know why, but that's just going to be... Um, Something we'll talk about at some other point. Okay. All right. Uh, tell us more about the Chitauri. Uh, there's nothing more to tell. They're the alien race from 1610. So the 1610 universe, the ultimate universe. And like I've talked about before, the ultimate universe is a newer universe. Um, and so I, actually when I did some research, I was actually surprised that the Chitauri um, – were the aliens in the Avengers? I forgot all about them, but then uh, when I did some research, I, I remember that they they were from the they were from the Ultimate, and they came out in two thousand two, so they're kind of really new. Um, they were created by Mark Miller and Brian Hitch, and I'm not a big fan of Mark Miller stuff, so it is what it is. Um, so they're kind of a new and and let's not we don't have to dig too much deeper into this. They're just, they're just a generic alien race to beat up. Okay, like that's it. That's the only reason they exist. Is for us to beat them up and fight and and do cool things with. So it's not it's not a whole bunch we have to talk about with them. But um, I wish they like there are a lot of cool alien races in the Marvel universe they could have picked. And the Shatari are fine. It's, it's it's fine. They picked them. Are they known for working with Thanos in the comics? No, no, not at all. In the Ultimate Universe, mm-hmm. there wasn't even a Thanos. Any, I don't even think Thanos existed in the Ultimate Universe. He might have, but I don't remember. No, he did, they were just a weird alien race that showed up. I mean, that was it. Who, like they, who like is this. it that Thanos is working with uh, uh, or a part of in Guardians of the Galaxy? He was working with... If you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. They're blue, I think. Yes, that's the Kree. He's Kree. working with the Kree. Yeah. Specifically, he's working with... Oh, you want to make me look it up, aren't you? Somebody, the Destroyer? No, not the Destroyer. Hang on. Mm. Uh... Oh man, is it Ronan? Ronan, thank you. Yeah, yes, Ronan. Ronan, the he's a so we're not getting we're not ready to talk about this yet. But Ronan is a kind. Of, Ronan is sort of like a judge kind of character. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's the Cree, and it's really interesting that you mentioned that. Um, the Cree are actually in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Cree are looked at as villains, but that's not how they're looked at in the Marvel comics. They're looked at as kind of like a benevolent important race so it's actually kind of funny oh, that's that interesting cool. yeah um, we'll get to that when we talk about captain marvel so i assumed that the chitauri were somehow related to the Kree or whatever no no because they're no, both working absolute, with thanos in the mcu that's absolutely there's absolutely nothing special about the chitauri besides the fact that they're alien and captain america gets to beat them up that's it <laughs> okay that's it <laughs> right yeah okay um I'm all out of questions. You can't be. We're not even halfway through the movie yet. I, what else is? Tell tell me what 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 are we missing? Because I probably don't okay, even so, know enough about the comics to even think to ask. All right. So we need so the, the mar, so we need to set up a couple of different things in this movie. The first thing we need to set up is tension between Captain America and Iron Man. So during the fight scene, we see that Captain America and Iron Man are kind of like going back and forth. Sort of like arguing with each other in a very personal way. Yeah, they I, don't yeah, seem I, cut, to like I cut you off earlier about this fight scene. Was there more, like other than Captain America and Iron Man, is there more that you want to kind of tell us about that? But no, the only, the only thing really good about that fight scene was that it, two things first. First, it established that Captain America and Iron Man are not going to see eye and eye. And that's important because at some point we do get uh, 
the Civil War, which is a which is a in a, it's a big comic um, thing. And in the in the Marvel comics, Iron Man and Captain America never really see eye to eye. They're friends, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of tension. And I'm really glad that um, this movie kind of sets this up. They do a really good job with that. So we get a little bit of that. Um, we also get that art, that fight scene also allows us to get more into um, Bruce Banner's kind of head. Right. I thought it was very really interesting because so like um, Tony Stark says, hey, how do you control it? How do you keep it under control? And um, he never, and Bruce Banner never really says until later he says, I'm always angry. Mm-hmm. And the way he controls it is by sort of like accepting the fact that the Hulk exists and kind of like instead of fighting it, he's just like letting it be and hoping that the Hulk won't show up unless he's absolutely necessary. So um, that that fight scene that that fight scene established a lot of the cool dynamics of the team. Yeah, so Hulk and does then, actually he does he does uh, show up on the helicarrier. I didn't really yeah. get like if he was able to compose himself and keep it together during that fight with all of the Avengers. I don't get how he turned into the Hulk. You know, he's, he's time. being man, he's being manipulated. So, the, so whenever Bruce Banner becomes agitated or upset or scared, he's going to change into the Hulk. And so, when the attack happens on the helicarrier and he falls, he's just kind of discombobulated and upset enough that his heart rate goes up enough that the Hulk pops out. Mm. But do remember that Loki is mentally manipulating that whole team. Right. And, and, and the Hulk's not in his right mind. The, 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 the movie never really says that, but that's true. And that's why when Hulk shows up and fights with them, he's a little calmer because he's like, he's in his right mind. So that's kind of what the, the movie could have explained that a lot better. So you got, you kind of have to make this up on your own. Yeah. Yeah. You um, did a good job of explaining that. Cause I was going to ask if you had it. Why he was yeah. kind of just complete chaos on the helicarrier, but a real like participating member of the Avengers in New York. Yeah, exactly. So it's like again, the movie could explain this more. Another thing that we see that I think is really important is the Thor Hulk fight. Like Thor, again, we're talking about power dynamics, right? Like when 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 Thor pushes Hulk through that wall. And we see like the Hulk and Thor looking at each other. If you're a comics fan, you're super excited <laughs> because Thor and Hulk have fought many times in the comics. And Thor technically is just as strong as Hulk. I think Hulk's a little stronger, but Thor and Hulk have been going at it for a long time. And it's always awesome. My hands down, this might be my favorite scene in any comics movie when Thor gets that hammer and just nails the Hulk in the head with that hammer, and Hulk goes flying, that is awesome. Because, like, we haven't seen anyone really, like, challenge the Hulk's power. He's just this big, massive brute. And then the Hulk, then Thor's like, I don't care how big you are, I'm going to knock you out. And he just nails him. And that is just so much fun. Like, I remember seeing that movie, like, people stood up and cheered. Because, like, if you're a comic (laughs) fan... This is exactly why you pay twenty bucks to see this fight, right? Uh, to get the to get this fantasy, and it's just just so so much fun. Uh, and again, we see this again uh, in Thor Ragnarok. Um, but this is that scene is just I can't say this enough. That scene is just so much fun to watch. There's a very um, quick scene near the end of the movie where, um, yeah, Hulk and Hulk Thor walk into so yeah, Hulk punches just like yeah. very casually. It's very fun. Thor yeah, it's out funny. of the out of the room completely yeah i don't think you know what i don't think people remember how much fun hulk was in the movie hulk was a lot of fun to watch in that movie he he was a he was a breakout hit and i i remember talking to talking with friends about it and they were like man hulk's awesome and everybody loved hulk so again like it was kind of a breakout all right what what else what are else? we all missing um you're missing so you're missing the shield disconnect so in the comics the avengers had a UN charter, but they never had any, a S.H.I.E.L.D. never had any authority of them in the original comics up until uh, probably around um, Civil War, probably late to early 2000s. This is really important. The Avengers didn't want to be under the, 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 uh, the authority of a government body. They wanted to be able, 
they had they had um if I remember correctly, they always had a government representative or a government liaison. So if they would talk to and work with, but they didn't take orders from the government. They did what they wanted to, and I, and Tony Stark funded them. In this movie, Shield starts the Avengers kind of, but then they leave. Right? You know, they they all get in, they get in the helicopter, they get in their ships, and they fly off. And then at the end, they're not part of the they're not part of Shield anymore. They're doing whatever they want. Right? Uh, and so that was kind of important because the idea that. I, I, we talked a little bit, a little bit about this with Captain America, I think, and maybe Iron Man Two. This movie came out in 2012, and unfortunately, we're still looking at this terrorism kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And the idea that Shield would have these superpowers they would use to fight terror is just kind of ugh, whatever. But if they're independent, doing what they want, that is like a lot more. It's like cleaner, a lot safer, and it's going to come up again when we talk about Captain America: Civil War. Their their independence is going to become a problem, and we'll get to that. So that's a big deal. Did you see any of that? Um, you know, fighting terror in this movie? I don't. I don't think there. I saw any. Because. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Like what? Like so. Um, Nick Fury says we have threats that we have to fight. What threats? Like what? I don't see any threats that you need to have these massive weapons for. Right? It's just like, eh, like what? But we are. All uh, they used they to talked this- about the destroyer. Yeah, but that kind of woke, just... woke them up to the fact that there are threats off planet, you know, that they weren't aware of. Well, yeah, that's that's that makes a lot of sense. Um, that's true. That makes a lot of sense. But um, this the ha- just having a government apparatus big enough to stop any kind of problems that we're going to face. That's definitely from George W. Bush times. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like. You know, like whenever like after nine eleven, we we create an entire different uh, set of um, of prerogatives, and we spent like trillions of dollars to create uh, a, a way that we could be quote unquote safe from terror. Yeah, right? it's and probably so, it's not a coincidence that the H N D H S and Shield both stand for Homeland. Yeah, uh, you know what? It didn't always stand that for Shield. Didn't always stand for Homeland. in the in the MCU. It did. Right in in the MCU, it did. Yeah. In the original, in the original Marvel comics, that eight st- stood for hazardous. Right. So what? what wait, what did it stand for in in the comics? The whole the whole thing. Uh, I'm going to look it up, but I, I believe it was hazardous. Uh, shield. I'm going to check real quick. Do you know for the? Do you know what it stands for in the MCU? Uh, you, you really put me on the spot. Uh, okay, so, wait, so the you're super nerdy. Hang on, wait, Come on, I know I'm super nerdy, but hang on. So, strategic homeland intervention, enforcement, and logistic division. Right. But in the previous comics, it stood for strategic hazardous intervention, espionage, logistics directorate. Mm. I'm going to send you a link right now. Yeah. The original form, the original one, way cooler than the new one <laughs> by far. <laughs> but doesn't. Doesn't tie into the Department of Homeland Security. Exactly. Yeah. I'll send you a link. So again, very interesting. Um, what else? Hang on. A couple other things. Uh, the fight in New York was was just playing cool. Uh, there's a montage scene where they're all fighting together, which is neat. This is the I first like time the- where you kind of see the um, the human cost of yeah. all of these battles. You know, yeah. you feel bad for the people that are in New York having to go through all of this. Yeah, if you're a comic fan, you don't blink an eye because uh, you've seen New York get destroyed multiple times. Mm. But if you're an MCU fan, it is kind of jarring to see the, the city destroyed like that by, by an alien race. You are correct on that. Uh, it's very interesting because Marvel was located, the, the business, the company was located in, in New York. So when they were doing most of their comic book stories, most of the superheroes were based in New York, which is interesting, like Spider-Man, the Avengers, uh, Daredevil, they're all based in, in New York. So that's kind of why they're usually there. But anyway, uh, no, the, the, the extreme destruction that was caused is very jarring, 100%. That's interesting you make that, make that point. Yeah, John Favreau uh, said that he um, wanted to change things up by setting Iron Man in... California. Yeah, you know, that was a good decision on his part. I actually think that was a good decision, 100%. Uh, 
Let's see. Other things that we need to know. We almost ran out of time. Uh, nothing else. That's pretty much it. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> I like seeing Hawkeye do his thing. Like, Hawkeye's arrows and what he was doing with those arrows was very on point with comics. Like, Hawkeye's that good. And having those trick arrows was a lot of fun to see. It was really awesome. Um, we see Hulk go to speed the Hulk, which is, which is a lot of fun. The only thing that I wish we saw more of was Captain America. We won't see him really do his Captain America thing until uh, we're a soldier. Um, and that's kind of disappointing. Like, we see him fight these aliens, but we never really see him bust loose and really be awesome. Uh, but we see a lot of Iron Man. So again, you not everybody can be awesome in this movie. Um, but I think Captain America got shortchanged a lot. Uh, but that's cool. But it will make up for that later. Yeah, like, his, his one cool scene is when he gives these um, yeah. police chiefs some like directions on what what they need to do to keep New York safe. And they're like, "Why should we listen to you?" And then Captain America kicks some alien signs right in front of them. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, that was great. Yeah, there was a. Um, what do you think of Captain what? America's um, his Uniform? suit? His suit, yeah. I hate it, but that's, it's actually interesting. There are some people who love that suit, and there's pe- and some people who hate that suit. That suit is terrible. I hate that suit. This he is the only movie good... that he has that suit in, right? Yeah, because it's bad. <laughs> but um, he'll he'll get a new suit that I like uh, in um, Age of Ultron. I like that suit a lot. That's the suit that I love. Uh, but he doesn't. Captain America doesn't have a. I like the original suit he had in his in his movie in Captain America: First Adventure. I like that suit. Mm-hmm. I did not like the suit that he. he it just looks too clean. Yeah, and yeah. This is a. I want you to kind of. It looks look like at this a. Next it looks it. like a velour tracksuit. That's actually 100. percent That's great. Um, I want you to notice this next time you watch this movie. In the in Avengers, Captain America's shield gets like some scorch marks and gets dirty but never gets really damaged. You never really see any paint come off. Mm. In the Captain America First Avengers, his shield got little scrapes where you can kind of see some of the paint coming off of the shield. Yeah. Um, I think they fixed this in Age of Ultron where the shield doesn't lose any color or scrapes. But it does look kind of dirty. It's actually kind of weird how clean that she, his shoe was in the in the Avengers movie versus the rest. It's just a kind of a side note, um, but it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, mm. Yeah, because in in uh, in the Captain America movie, it gets when um, Peggy Carter shoots at him in a test. Th- it, that leaves marks on the shield. Scorch marks, like little scorch marks. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's like dirt. It's not basically. dented. Yeah, yeah. It's right. Yeah, it's this little like heat mark, like dust and smoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but in but in this movie, Avengers, you don't really get to see that, so they kind of fix that later. Yeah. So is uh, is is the suit that he's wearing in this movie more true to the comics? No, the suit that he wears in Age of Ultron is more is more true to the comics. This 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 this, this suit was ugly. Absolutely ugly. It was an mm. ugly suit. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, it's very strange. Now we could probably talk about that all day, but the suit just isn't that good. Okay. Uh, what else? I think that is almost it. The main, the biggest thing is the end credit scene with Thanos. Did you, you, did you see that? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So in this one, we've got Lizard Man again. He yeah. is Shatari, right? Yeah. Yes. Let's just say yes. Because I don't know. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna I say think yes. he's Tatari because I think he was like kind of the guy behind the Tatari invading Earth. I don't know. All right. So anyway, I'm Lizard Man is yes. talking to Thanos. Um, yeah. I don't understand anything about this. Tell us what we uh, should have. Okay. Known. So in the scene, so we Iron Man takes the nuke, goes to the portal, the nuke explodes. Blows up the entire Shatari army. Iron Man goes back to the portal and like and basically Thanos loses. Loki gets captured. Mm-hmm. He's sent back to Asgard with Thor. The Tesseract goes with them. And all everybody goes in separate ways. It's all fun. Now, at the end credit scene, the guy, the lizard guy, I'm butchering this, but the lizard guy says, these humans are unruly. Battling them will is is to court death. Then Thanos stands up and smiles. This is right. actually a big deal. 
in the comics, the only reason why Thanos does anything is because he worships death. And, he, and, and this is something to, to be aware of. Death is an actual being in the, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not, not in Marvel Cinematic Universe, but in the comics. Death is actually a person. Like there's a, there are people that represent aspects of our, our uh, universe, and death is actually responsible for death. And Thanos is in love with her and wants to appease her, and he kills half the universe because he's in love with her. Now, the comic, the movies don't do that because it's super weird. <laughs> um, but when the Satari guy says it's like the court death, it's a flashback to the comics. And then we see Thanos and we're like, yes, it's Thanos. We're definitely going to get the Infinity War. This is where we're going. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. And once you see Thanos as a comic book fan, you understand that Marvel is getting ready to create the Infinity War which is the biggest event that's happened in Marvel Comics, period. It's one of the biggest events. It's super awesome. It was a great event. Um, and it's, it's like historic. Uh, it's important. It's like, you know, steeped in cool stories. And so uh, we're definitely going to start getting some cool stuff because now we know that Marvel's in it to win it. But we're going to get a lot of movies that we're building up to get all the Infinity Gems, we're going to get to see Thanos, and we're going to get to see all this stuff. It's going to be pretty fun. Uh, and that's why, hands down, that scene with Thanos is the coolest scene that we've gotten. Okay. So Thanos is uh, infatuated with death. Yes. Uh, death is a, a woman? In the comics, she appears to be a woman, yes. Does she Actually, look like the on. Grim Reaper at all? Or I'm going to get you a picture. Give me t- 10 seconds. Okay. Do you so you've already said that you don't think death is going to show up in the MCU because it would be weird? Weird, hey, who's um, going, yeah, who's however, going to do that? however, what if death shows up in the Eternals? I doubt that, uh, heavily. I just don't think that's going to happen. Mm. Um, I just don't see them doing that. Okay, it's just weird. It's just absolutely weird. Celestial um, with a head the size of a small moon. Not weird. <laughs> Death personified too weird. Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll follow you on that. <laughs> okay. Hang on, I'm going to send you an image um, real quick so you can kind of see what Death looks like. Death changes appearance a lot, um, but this is one, one way she looks. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh yeah, there's another picture too. Um, I kind of want to show you. Uh, that, but she changed. That's not what I was expecting when you said death. Yeah, it, it, just, it just looks funny all the time. Um, so it's interesting. But anyway, um, that's one of my complaints about uh, the uh, Marvel and Infin- the Avengers Infinity War and Infin- Infinity um, Marvel's Infinity War and Marvel's Avengers uh, Endgame. Is because they don't address this. Um, Thanos is crazy in the comics. He's absolutely quite crazy. Uh, and they try to make his um, quest to be a little bit more logical. But again, I didn't like that. But we'll get to that uh, in a dozen of movies or so when we finally get to talk about it, which is a ways away, actually. But we'll get there soon. Okay. All right. Any Anything else? No, except that um, when you look at uh, this movie, uh, it's just a it's a it's a hit. There's, that's, I can't complain anything about it except for Captain America's suit and how uh, Scarlett Johansson is sexualized constantly. But other than that, I think it's great. Uh, it's it's going to be better than uh, Age of Ultron. Uh, I think Joss Whedon did a pretty good job, but it, it is what it is. Uh, and um, that's it. It's just great. I guess I, I, you, you, when you watch this movie, it's like drinking a nice nice cup of tea or a nice Coke. It's refreshing. It's fun. It's, it's nice. Uh, production values off the charts. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just you know it's, it's fantastic. But it, it, as far as if, if you're, if the, I'll say this last thing. As far as the comics connections, there's a lot of stuff that's left out. So for example, I said I was going to talk about Ant Man. The original Avengers. Are you ready? Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Are you ready? Who the, are you? Are? I'm Iron ready. Man. Iron Man. Thor, the Hulk, Ant-Man, the Wasp. 
That's the original Avenger. Original That's Fox. um unexpected, I guess. Yeah, Captain America would show up in Avengers number four and they kick Hulk out. They just say, Hulk, you're crazy, and they kick him out. And so then it's Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Ant Man, and the Wasp. But Ant Man turns into Giant Man by then, which is kind of confusing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're missing two really important characters. We're missing Jan Van Dyke, Jan Van Dan, I think her name is, and we're missing Hank Pym. And Hank Pym, if you remember, because you're a big fan of Ant Man, right. Hank Pym is the guy who created the the tech to make the the resizing tech. Yeah, right? you Hank said Pym, that. Hank, you said that um, in the MCU, Howard Stark is kind of responsible for some of the things that Hank Pym was responsible for in the comics. Yes, one hundred percent. Like um, so, <sighs> Hank Pym. We'll have to wait and talk more about this, but Hank Pym actually created Ultron in the comics. Hank Pym actually created the Vision in the comics. Hmm. Uh, so Hank Pym does a lot of very interesting things in the comics that we don't get to see. We don't get the Wasp, which is actually kind of strange. We don't get her until uh, Ant Man Two, um, but that's not even her. That's um, that's her daughter, and the Wasp is technically a mutant. She doesn't have she resizes in different shapes based because she has a, she has this special ability to do that she doesn't it's not using technology she can just do it on her own oh she's not doing it the same way ant-man is no ant-man uses technology but she doesn't in the 1610 comic for you comic universe the new ultimate comic universe the new i say new when it was made 20 years ago uh it's actually it's actually kind of cool not cool not cool at all but uh ant-man uh hank pym uses uh, the wasp is genetic abilities to create the resizing technology, uh, uh, and and nobody and nobody knows that she's a mutant. It's a secret. So, it's, and I don't think in the Avengers we ever talk about the wasp being a mutant. I should check on that. But anyway, when we talk about Ant Man, that's going to be a lot of cool things because there's some things that you don't know about a lot of this stuff with Ant Man that the movies sort of kind of thread together that I think is. Um, is worth talking about more because Hank Pym uh, has done some good and bad things in the Marvel in the Marvel universe. So it's it's, just, it's stuff worth talking about later. Hmm. That's interesting. The the so they got the big three right, or at least they've got the the big three consistent with the comics. Mm-hmm. But those other two, you know, Ant Man and Wasp, are completely unexpected for me. As yeah, a, yeah. And, and and it's odd because. That they they the original Avengers were also the original Avengers of the Ultimate line, which this movie is kind of based of. So I'm not really sure why they don't bring up uh, the Ant Man and the Wasp. I'm not really sure why. Um, I don't know. All right. So in the movie, we have um, Black Widow and Hawkeye rounding out the Avengers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do they join the Avengers at some point? Oh yeah, but it's a long time. It's a it's ways down the road. Are the like, I think, like, are the big three still part of the Avengers when they're in there? Yeah. I, well, Hulk I don't got think kicked Thor out. Was. Hulk got kicked out. I don't think Thor was, but okay, yeah. the Avengers have they have hundreds of members in the Marvel uh, comics. There's hundreds of Avengers members, mm. and they even have reserve members. So it's not un, it's not un, it's not odd to have a rotating cast of characters. In fact, the Wasp was the leader of the Avengers for quite a while. Oh, wow. Um, the Scott, Scott Lane, the uh, Ant-Man from the movies, he was in the Avengers for a while. Uh, he was also in the Fantastic Four, which is kind of cool. Uh, there's a lot of members. They have, they, they have tons of members. So uh, it doesn't, ultimately, it doesn't matter who's in the Avengers. It's the spirit that counts. It's the spirit that matters. Like, these group of people coming together to, to, to stop bad things and, the, and i think that movie represents that spirit very well you know what you know what my takeaway from all of what you just said is what's that chris evans rejoins the mcu as the human torch and leads the avengers in future movies yeah that's it yeah that's never gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> it's not that's not chris evans will never do that ever again he's he's got plenty of money and he, and he doesn't want to do that anymore right yeah, okay. that's funny. But yeah. that's a that's a good idea, though. I like the idea. Yeah. Well, Mike, how can people hear our podcast? Where can they find us? They can find us anywhere they can listen to podcasts. You can follow us. You can subscribe to us. You can rate us and review us there. 
if you want, you can also check us out on YouTube. We put our uh, our podcast up there as well. It's a great way to do it. What's the most popular avenue so far? Apple Podcasts is the right. most popular. So if you use something other than Apple Podcasts, you should really, you know, tell your friends to listen to us so that your favorite way of listening to the podcast can become the most popular. No, oh, good, yeah. And yeah. also, if you have any questions or comments or even concerns, please let us know. I would love to get some questions about all this stuff. Um, yeah, tweet at us. Like, tweet at us yeah, on tw- Twitter tweet. at Super Sideshow. Yeah, give us a tweet, all that kind of good stuff, and, and we'll follow you back, and we'll talk about so I'm a, I'm a huge comics nerd. I get more and more nerdy as time goes on, so I'll, I'll be, I would love to talk more about this stuff. Super nerdy. Super, I am pre. I'm pre. What's our next one? So we're going to do Loki next, right? Loki? Yeah, yeah, it looks like the timing is going to work out for Loki to be next. If not, then Iron Man 3. All right, looking forward to it.